Welcome to Nebraska Preps Post Game with Damon Benning and Jacob Padilla. That's the big voice guy, and that music mean, means it is a Monday. I get my man, Jacob Padilla. It is another episode of NEB Preps. And we are fully into the postseason. How about that? How about that? And this is on the heels of me not wanting to steal time, Jacob, and talk NBA. <laughs> yeah. Do you, know I mean, how, do you know how hard it is? It's very hard. Good news is the season just started, so we got a lot of time to jump into it. We only have 79 more. Hopefully, uh, by the next time we talk, uh, the Suns will pull up even with the Lakers in the series uh, and well, let's, won't be down or two. Let, let's, let's hope not. Uh, can I just ask you something real quick about the Suns before I move off? Sure. Are, are you? Do you feel better about their options on the bench this year? Yeah, I feel better about the the process as a whole. I I think but B- Bud's done the right things and tried to incorporate the right things. It's just a matter of can the guy are the guys able to change and fix and get over their stubbornness and realize what, how they had caught play, them yeah. last year. Yeah. Um, because we've seen a few times already where off to a great start and then things get into a rut and they fall back into old habits and it costs them. So are we, I joke about this all the time with college, with college football coaches and recently in the NFL with Stefanski where we have this love hate thing. I was joking with you about fickle. And uh, so what kind of coach, if you had to handicap it is in Phoenix, is he see the award winner or see the guy getting ran out of town? I'm trying to figure it out. I, I think he's shown himself to be a high level coach. Maybe not the, the elite tier of coaches where he's got an answer for everything. Um, as we saw in, in Milwaukee, it probably kind of ran into a ceiling there, but that ceiling was uh, an NBA title, which I'm very familiar with, um, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, so, and he's done it multiple stops now. So I have faith in him being able to get the offense to, uh, the the level it needs to be. Um, it's just a matter of, all right, how much scheme versus players and execution and all that, which, uh, I I think that's a a, a topic on the football field around here, uh, recently, actually all season, but, uh, particularly coming out of this last one. Well played. Yeah. Uh, but this isn't a college show. Let's, let's get back to the, the high school football. All right. On high school football. Let's, you want to start in a, yeah. Um, so not, uh, fairly uneventful, um, final week of the regular season in terms of wins, Uh, very few top 10 matchups in a to start. We had one. Yeah. That was the only one. So no changes, uh, in the final regular season coaches poll, but, uh, you mentioned you had the only top 10 game, uh, one versus 10. Interesting game. It was 14-12 uh, at one point there, yeah. and then 30 straight to end it. Um, you guys kind of settled in there, and uh, defense uh, took care of business. You had the defensive touchdown in there as well from, from Bryson Williams, and then another Tay-Tay Jenkins game to 124 on the ground, uh, receiving touchdown as well. Um, only 11 our, our passes. Our defense has scored touchdowns. eight touchdowns this year. That all <laughs> in 50 points in total because we've had we had the safety too. So it's it's eight defensive touchdowns and, and the one safety. I was gonna say I'm curious. I hadn't looked at the the numbers for all, but where does that rank on your team in terms of individuals? <laughs> so obviously Warren at uh, quarterback, I think he's got 22. But then you're so balanced. Uh, Jenkins w- would be the leader, but then it seems like all the receivers have. Uh, you, you've got a lot of guys into the end zone this season. Yeah, the cool thing about them and 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 us as an offense is we can kind of play matchups. Yeah. You know, you you've got four or five really good players with Eli Johnson and Purify and Kenan Cotton and you know Christian Jones is out there and you know Quentin Warren is out there and there's it's just a lot of a lot of names, a lot, lot a lot of guys that that uh, Braylon can throw to. But I think ultimately for us, especially as Hopefully the weather turns. We want to be able to run the football, yeah, right. Because if if we can run it and and keep teams from having success running it, which is which, which you've was, done all season, which was a concern going into this one, and they found some good schemes early. And uh, Valencia, right, the young kid, yeah. uh, he, he got loose a little bit. Yeah. Um, he had Pamer and two good, touchdowns good, good on the patience. ground, but... and uh, yeah, Pamer hit us out of the wildcat and got to the corner. So I mean, they scheme wise, they really challenge you. Because they're going to find a way to move, to want to wanna run the football on the ground. So it is a good, I, we needed a good test like that against a well coached team. And 
and took it into the half and had some adjustments to make, and, and it was what it was. Yeah, and so that looked like it was going to be close early and then not so much late. There were a few uh, teams that ended up pulling out the win, but probably closer than they uh, that we would have expected going in. I think three of them had uh, one score wins against uh, unranked teams here. Central, we talked about how much of a role they were on uh, going in the last season, regular or last game of the regular season, and then had to hold on 34-27 uh, against Fremont. It was 20-20 all, and then they scored uh, two touchdowns to take the lead. It's just pretty impressive what Fremont was able to do, especially at the quarterback yeah, spot. Exactly. Um, they found a way to, to to move the ball and put some points up. Um, they had an 88-yard fumble recovery touchdown uh, return um, to make it a one-score game, and then Central was able to hold on from there, but um, that's how that ends up being a one-score game. B.J. Newsom, 289 yards, two he's touchdowns. Significantly better than people realize. He's a really good quarterback. Yeah, and he's got uh, Pittman, uh, five catches, 111 yards, and a touchdown, and Yassir Grigsby, four catches, 107 yards, and a touchdown, so he's got some weapons out there. Then Haney on the ground, we know about him. 22 carries, 200 yards, and three scores there. So offensively, they, they were fine in that game uh, outside of the the fumble that put points on the board for uh, for Fremont. But defensively, they got to lock back in. We just saw them uh, a few really strong defensive performances. This one probably isn't what you want to see going in the regular season but or going in the postseason, but um, they still got the win, uh, as did Omaha North. It took them overtime to, yeah, to beat Lincoln Southwest. Uh, 42-34 was the final there. Um, and uh, yeah, that was... Wasn't expecting that. Uh, I wasn't either. I, I was. I was not either. I. I felt like, you know, North was a team. And listen, you don't apologize for winning. And they won. And I'm sure it's not the way. It didn't always look like Coach Martin and and those guys wanted it to look. You want to come out of there with a win and get ready for the playoffs. But I still think that that's a team that's, I I, I think trending in the right direction. Defensively, though, they're they're going to have to figure out a way to, to to get around Tyson Terry. Yeah. Yeah, that's really unfortunate seeing some of the guys that we saw go down the last few weeks of the season. They were having great seasons, great players. Um, like, yeah, yeah, hope really. This is about as impressive of a collection of guys that aren't able to contribute <laughs> late in the season as I've seen in a long time. Which is never what you want. Um, but credit to North, uh, Mikey Gao um, hit Deion Cooper for the go-ahead touchdown in overtime. Then Gal ran in the two-point try to, to put them up eight, uh, and, and the defense got the stop um, to secure the win there. Um, but, yeah, Jaron Cannon, three rushing touchdowns. Darian Jones, just another highlight reel. He had a 75-yard uh, receiving touchdown and a 95-yard kickoff return touchdown. So just adding to the ridiculous all-around season that he's yeah. had there. Incredible player. Can get you multiple ways. Yeah. Um, credit to uh, the Lincoln Southwest passing attack, though. That's how they uh, were able to attack him. Uh, Brock, uh, Braxton Tepley, 21 and 37 for 276 yards and three touchdowns. And then they had a kickoff return touchdown as well. So that's another got, got to clean that up if you're north. But again, you don't, don't apologize for a win. You take it, move on and try to get better, which is what Elkhorn South will have to do as well. Um, obviously, Papio South um, squeezed in there, but 28 uh, 20 win for for. Elkhorn South there and Papio South was up 17 to seven. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we looked at that right away. Like, what is going on? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sauter and that test is like, uh, what's going on here? <laughs> uh, and then 21 0 Elk, uh, Elkhorn South run later um, and they're in control. Um, Papio South kicked a field goal late to, to make it a one score game, but then weren't able to do anything beyond that. Um, but that's, again, you got to, Passing attack has got to got to be a little bit cleaner than they were in that game. Had a couple of giveaways there, um, and they, they had they got 175 and three scores out of Shanahan plus 51 receiving yards. Um, well, he's a crafty runner. Yeah, he's he's patient. <laughs> he's a patient, crafty son of a gun. And Elkhorn South, they they kept uh, uh, Jones in check. Uh, it was the passing game there for Papia South. They got a their offense the has been kind of hit or miss yeah. too with that passing game. But when they get good balance. Yeah, uh, the four and five record can be a little misleading. Uh, Cunningham threw for 261 yards and two scores. Elon Washington had a big game, uh, 108, uh, 112 yards and a touchdown. Cooper Barnes had an 82 yard receiving touchdown as well. Um, so again, some things for Elkhorn South there to clean up uh, as they head into a tough bracket. Yeah, because uh, Papio South win. will open with Millard South, right? Did I, did I read that right. Yep, uh, down at the bottom of the bracket, and uh, Creighton Prep needed to get the win. Yeah, that's a little bit back and forth. North. 
kept that uh, playoff streak alive. So they are officially in, in, in the bracket as well. So as we look at this, anything uh, in particular jump out to you? I, you get Westview uh, in the opening round as the, the one seed. Congrats to them for making the playoffs there. So there, uh, the there's 16. a there's a couple of tricky ones, and 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 uh, you know obviously in eight nine you'd expect to be tricky. Papio yeah. Central is and again is, one we just saw a few weeks ago and, is interesting because obviously if we can handle business against Westview we'll get that winner. I think North Lincoln East is is interesting, and Carney and Millard West, Millard West. The thing that I think, and and Coach Cool, he's done this a long time, so I, I'm sure he gets this. Sometimes I feel like watching Millard West, you have to kind of play against them to feel for the schemes and kind of their creativity in terms of running the ball. So it it could take Carney a little bit to to kind of get a handle on it, but Carney's pretty good defensively. So Millard West is going to have to keep Carney's offense down. Yeah. I think to kind of stay in that one. And we'll get to learn how much progress Millard West has made. Obviously kind of the scheduled scheduled losses start brutal. the year really tough and then kind of scheduled wins. The schedule lightened up significantly and they're able to get on a roll. Now we get to see, all right, where are they for real on that, on that scale? Have they improved or was it just a case of uh, an easier schedule? How about prep in Elkhorn South? Yeah. <laughs> that one's hard for me. I just don't know, like emotionally, which prep team shows up. That's the pre- we've seen them be capable of def- uh, controlling ground games yeah. defensively uh, previously. Can, can they do it against uh, one of the better ones that they'll face this year with Shanahan? And what happens for Elkhorn South if they do? Yeah, we just saw that um, even with Shanahan having a big game, Papia South was able to hang with them. So. Uh, prep's got to be able to, to to move the ball and score. They have to sustain drives. That was the problem, like watching them play. They they run some good stuff. They're able to, to have some success, but I had a tough time executing enough times in a row to get into the end zone. Who do you think feels better about themselves right now, Lincoln, North Star, or Bellevue West? <laughs> Is that, uh, on, on paper, you're thinking, okay, I kind of like Bellevue West. 11, yeah. They're not very healthy, though. That's the problem, and... Like we talked about it with uh, with Anderson, he was such a big part of their offense, and now it hurts you in two spots because you got to slide James over to the quarterback and then figure something else out as the complement in the backfield. Um, so that yeah, that's that was that was a bummer. Again, we talked about the injuries down the stretch of the season, another uh, significant impact one. Um, so yeah, I, I don't I don't know that WS feels great about themselves. They at least got the win to, to close out the regular season that they needed to. Took yeah. care of business there. Um, but I guess we'll see how healthy they end up, uh, end up being in that one. Yeah, I went to jump down to B, and boy, what a topsy turvy the seedings. <laughs> and this one, I'm sure they raised some eyebrows, but I mean, listen, that's strength of schedule matters, district play matters. And uh, as we'll see in C, <laughs> C1, this is probably, I thought, where it had probably the biggest impact because you're going to get some tricky first round matchups, i.e., in Elkhorn and Elkhorn North and I mean some that's a 13 yeah. and a four I think well and we've so many rematches uh in here because of how, or 12 and a five yeah how strong um the that district was and the, the the guys ended up playing each other but uh we did not see Elkhorn North complete the triangular or the everybody beating each other there uh, Bennington kind of got themselves uh Back on track, um, finished eight and one, 20 to six against Elkhorn, Elkhorn North. So we saw that defense get back to what we've known them to be over the last 40, the previous 46 games. Yeah. And their Elkhorn, or excuse me, Bennington's offense has kind of slowed down a little yeah. bit with interchanging quarterback play. Yeah. Boafakio, um got the start at quarterback again, only 42 yards passing and a pick. Um, but they, they leaned on Will Guts on the, on the ground game, 30 carries, 130 yards, and two touchdowns. Uh, they also had a fumble recovery touchdown. So, again, from Aiden Smith, the defense back to contributing uh, to the, the the point total there. And they did a great job of keeping both Beachy and Tinglehoff in check. Yeah, um, Beachy, sub-50 completion, uh, 130 yards through the air, two picks, uh, only 33 yards on the ground, and Tinglehoff only 39 yards on, on the ground. So... Um, you, you kind of lock in on those guys, then those, that's what drives the Elkhorn North offense, and that's how you get uh, six points. So Bennington back to being the the stout defense that everybody's going to have problems with, but now you're kind of wondering about the the offense again. Will that allow teams to maybe hang around and 
um, give them a chance to, to steal games against them in the postseason here. Yeah, now with the seeding, Scott goes on the same half the bracket as Seward. <laughs> if if all if seeds hold with this one too. So Seward getting the two seed, uh, they'll host Pius. I think it's the obviously the fifteen versus the two. Boy, there it was it was pretty crowded at the top for seedings in B. Yeah. Um you mentioned there, Scott, uh, as a three seed, pretty darn good three seed. Uh, so, so who's the better three seed respective to their class? Is it Wahoo or Scott? I mean, I mean, Wahoo as a three is shocking. Yeah. And Sauter prepared us for like they, they could have even finished up as four, been a four just because the way the, the points worked out. But uh, so here's here's the season for Joe Kaliga. We talked about him weekly. 52 receptions for 1,129 yards and six touchdowns on offense and five picks on defense. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. He S- Sounds pretty all Nebraska to me. He had nearly half of Dylan Van Dyke's 23-46 passing having yards. A fan t- just rewriting the passing records. It's yeah. good. 29 passing touchdowns, nine rushing touchdowns. Uh, another good game this week to close out the season against Blair. And so, yeah, it's got explosive offense there. Um, going into the postseason as a three seed at eight and one. Uh, Waverly, they had a scare. Um, Pius. Uh, How about their opener? That, that's Norris and Waverly, right? Uh, yeah, that's... <laughs> I mean, welcome to Class B, yeah. I guess. Yeah, well, and Norris is coming off a 42-20 win over Elkhorn to close out the regular season. Yeah. Uh, and Waverly escaped against Pius. Uh, or, uh, yeah, against Pius. They were down 27-24 after the third quarter. Uh, and then got go ahead touchdown in the in the uh, in the fourth. Axman again, they've leaned all the way into him now. Thirty carries, two hundred forty four yards, and a touchdown. Three uh, thirty eight receiving yards. He also threw a ten yard passing uh, passing touchdown. So in the last two weeks, sixty seven carries for four hundred forty six yards. I was going to say five hundred. I feel like that's my well. You might you might Ben McLaughlin. Yeah. You can do better math than me. You toss in his one hundred and seven receiving yards, so we put, that puts him over five hundred. So that's incredible. That's in two weeks. <laughs> yeah. So make, make it up that, for lost time. Is that pretty good? Yeah. yeah. Well, welcome back. Yeah. Uh, and he's going to be fresh too. Credit to uh, Pius attempts. Alex Weber, though, senior, had 20 tackles and two picks on defense to, to, to give them a, ch- a chance to, to hang in that one. That reminds me of some Cassidy days. He used to patrol the, the linebacking core for them. And uh, this is probably 15 or 16 at Pius. And they got a couple of neck roll guys there still, still over there off of A Street. Good to see Pius make it. They, you know, it was kind of it was a tough season. A few injuries to overcome too, yeah. but uh, they get in as the fifteen, and 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 they'll welcome Seward. Yeah, and the final regular season game to, to mention is the the battle for Gretna, and Gretna East uh, pulled it out twenty three twenty over Gretna. Monster game from Connor Sam at twenty seven carries, two hundred forty three yards, and two touchdowns. And feed him. Our own uh, producer Austin Jacobson uh, was out there um, covering covering that game for us. Did a great job. Uh, a lot of highlights and. Uh, so if, if you're not already, go follow Austin to Jacobson I'm on a, Twitter. I'm a big fan of his camera work. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's the thing that I appreciate the most about folks that, that cover things live like that. Just the feel for the angles, knowing where to be, because you always have to be ready. Yeah. You just never know like when it's going to pop. Yeah, that that's the problem. Like it's so frustrating when you like you think, all right, they're they're certain situation they're this far away like i don't have to record i'll get the next one just in case and then as you're like oh no the play is uh, developing you're seeing the guy drop back and throw a deep wa- running a guy running wide open you're like ah darn it i don't know how many times i the, the ratio of i should record this but i'll be fine until the next one versus big plays you actually get uh, is not what i want it to be for me personally but and yeah, I, you, you get the chip shot air quotes 47 yard game winner hey that guy won't have to buy a burger in town <laughs> that's pretty good by k2 yeah uh might need to set up a deal out there at the uh heard out sports bar uh, and gretna there to uh, celebrate that win for that team but i need to find something that starts with a k for the alliteration it can't be like cookies for camden or anything it's got to be i don't crispy no yeah crispy creams maybe for camden I don't know. Something. Yeah. yeah. That's a big time kick. 47 yards in high school. No gimme. No, <laughs> without a doubt. Um, so that's a great win for, for Grant and East there to close out the regular season. And they get in as the 10th seed. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's obviously they, with the, the talent base out in Gretna, the, the history of success at Gretna High, 
makes makes that kind of split up and opening up a new school a little bit easier, but still impressive. Um, nice job for them to, to, to make the postseason here uh, in year two. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, so they get uh, Gretna and Gretna East end up splitting opposite sides of the bracket. Gretna East is at 13 or Gretna is at 13 now uh, at five and four. Uh, so you, you talked about the we got Scott and Seward on the same side. Um, anything else jump out to you? Uh, you mentioned Elkhorn North, Elkhorn High as a first round matchup. Um, let's see here. Uh, Scott's both at the four opposite yeah. Bennington, um, and Elkhorn North as the five. Like that's that's a pretty tough that's little deep. quarter of the the bracket there. That's deep. You you come through that gauntlet on either half the bracket, and you've you've done some work. Yeah, you, you have done some work to represent B. And Scott's was, was it Waverly there one loss? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so eight and one, and that was a competitive, pretty competitive game from what I remember. Um, so now they'll, they get a chance to, they, they got to go through Gretna as a 13, which it's an interesting contrast of styles there. Yeah, with Gretna's going to air it they out. They can score. Yeah. They're going to run the ball. Um, so that'll be a good first round test. And then you get the winner of that uh, North and high a rematch there for Elkhorn North, obviously. Um, uh, and then you run into Bennington. So Scott's West got a, as a four seed. They've got a pretty uh, pretty tough draw uh, in, in this bracket. Mm. Let's jump on down to C one where Sydney draws the one. You're thinking, oh, okay, well, and Wahoo will be the no. Ashland Greenwood, welcome to the postseason. That that matchup on the bottom half of that deal, ooh, that's a potential semifinal. <laughs> So, yeah, you look at that uh, potential rematch with Auburn as the seven seed in the second round if, if they get past O'Neill, who um, Columbus Lakeview beat uh, O'Neill 31 uh, 14 in uh, this past week to close out the regular season um, to hand O'Neill their first loss. Um, and Sydney, you mentioned the one seed, they, they took care of business against Shadron, only 14 nothing, but shut out against a pretty good Shadron offense. We know. Uh, how good Quinn Bailey is, and they held them to season low 100, uh, 100 rushing yards, no touchdowns. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, that Sydney defense is operating at a high level, and uh, what you want to see going in the postseason. But um, yeah, and then Wahoo's got uh, what either Boys Town or Cozad in the second round. They, they take care of business against DC West, and, and then potentially Ashram Greenwood. Uh, that's <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Um, well, you look and you look at my guys. I mean, Central City is the five at eight and one. And that one, you talk about an explosive offense. And and for their troubles, uh, they went and they get the winner of Central Catholic and Columbus Lakeview. Like, nice. <laughs> As a potential 5-4, five, 5-13 five, winner. So, I, well, it is tough. Yeah, it is just really tough. Yeah, C one C one's pretty strong. It's just that makes what Wahoo has done this season and uh, all that more impressive. Just how far away they've been from everybody. So that's that's the question going in here. There's no some, matter how there's the some moving tra- there's yeah. some looming travel. Yeah, potentially in C one as you move on. I that that one might be the class where I think seeds will matter the most for teams at the top because you're going to be on the road. Oh, well, can you imagine if? Wahoo had slipped to the four and had to go to Sydney yeah. in the semifinals. <laughs> that would have been that would have been tough. But uh, now they managed to avoid that. Um, they w- would would have to go to Ashland Greenwood if seeds hold. But uh, yeah, they make it through that. They they get to play down in Lincoln. Um, so yeah, C two um, kind of uh, it held true. Yeah, kind of with with Newman as the two and and Catholic as as the one. Yeah, Catholic. We we talked about the. Kind of last big game of the last uh, to close out the regular season there, thirty-four uh, ten over number three Hardington Cedar Catholic, um, and Cedar Catholic uh, gets the seven seed as a result with their second loss there. Um, no, but isn't that amazing? Yeah, Norfolk Catholic <laughs> again. It, it looks like uh, Bishop Newman forty-eight uh, twenty-seven uh, over uh, another top ten team in uh, Raymond Central. Uh, uh, Connor Booth, 25 carries, 353 yards, and six touchdowns. Just rewriting. His season, 184 carries, 2,414 yards, 44 rushing touchdowns. That's 13.1 yards per carry. It's incredible. He's got over 5,500 uh, yards in his career uh, and 93 touchdowns. So he's going to hit the triple-digit touchdown mark uh, in the postseason. Um, he's going to go over 6,000 yards uh, in, in his career. 
just a fantastic, fantastic player. Incredible career. And uh, let's see, Bishop Newman, they come at the two. So, yeah, we wouldn't see that rematch. Imagine that the first game of the, the regular season and potentially if he seems hold, that would be uh, the championship game as well. And Bishop Newman looks like the second best team uh, in in, uh, in C2. Um, they've got, obviously, the, the best player. But we saw that in the first week, Norfolk Catholic, they knew how to slow down that best player. Yes, they did. Better than anybody else says. So, um, that yeah, they, again, just like so in C1, Norfolk Catholic, nobody's really touched them the most of the season. Um, so they're looking strong heading into the postseason. Anything else jump out? I'd be curious to see what happens with – because that's a that's a 2-3 potentially uh, with Newman and Battle Creek if seeds hold. I mean, how about that one for a precursor? <laughs> Yeah, that's tough. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's just it's a tough draw. Yeah, T- tough, well, tough draw. Boone Central got upset by Ord in the last uh, yeah. last game last week, and that dropped them. They're down in the eight seed. Um, so they, they win. They get Norfolk Catholic yeah, in the second them on round. The to- yeah, that's, puts them on the top half to, and, to see. And that's who Norfolk Catholic opens up with uh, is Ord there. Um, Who's in at the sixteen with a four and five record too? Yeah, and Jordan Williams had a great season for them. Do uh, Russian quarterback type there. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's C2. Um, I think w- obviously the, the eight man playoff started last week, uh, seeing, so there's, uh, about five, uh, I think, uh, double digit seeds that, 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 um, secured victories, uh, in, in D1 Sandhills Valley, the 15 upset number two, Pleasanton handed them their first loss. Uh, yeah. And they get in at three and yeah. five to advance. Yeah. That's, uh, it's good on qu- quite a win for them. And it, it wasn't. 42 20. Like yes. they dominated that game. Yeah. Um, so props to them. And then EMF, the 12 seed at four and four. Um, program, dominated. That's, program that's had some success. Yeah. So uh, they know how to win in postseason. Yeah. And they uh, took down a 7 1 Hardington Newcastle team 50 to 20 there. Um, so, and, and they get Stanton. So, <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Uh, see where we How about Stanton where... being the two? Yeah. Again, the way schedules work out. Yeah. yeah. Can make for some interesting uh, matchups and again, and, and you, paths. you you could make the case outside of B that the team, the perceived best team in the respective classes, did not get the one seed. Yep, but did get the two. They'll be able to host uh, yeah. Miller, Miller South's the two, Wahoo's a three, Stanton's a two. It's 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 all over the place. Yep. Again, this comes down to schedules, the wild card points, and all that. Um, and then, so, so yeah, Sandy Creek the one, uh, Stan the two, and uh, Sandy Creek's no slouch though. I mean, sauter has been talking about them for almost since the off season when he took the visit down there in the summer to to preview them. So it'll be pretty good. Yep. Uh, so those uh, are the uh, Guardian Angels, Central Catholic at the, the four seed. They are also Unde- undefeated. undefeated. Yep. Um, so that, uh, them, Sandy Creek and Stanton are the, the, the nine and O teams now, uh, heading into the bracket in D1 in D2, um, twin loop, uh, at the 16 knocked off number one Loomis handed them their first loss 36, 34. So that one was a barn better. burner, um, 12 seed Kennesaw five and three, uh, beat five seed Ainsworth, uh, also five and three, 68, 42. And then finally Axtell at the uh, 10 spot, uh, 500 team. Uh, beat seven seed Mullen, um, forty four twenty. So th- those are the upsets going into uh, D two. Um, you Arkansas could potentially Catholic see a, the one. Yeah, yeah, you could potentially see a Samuel Stedford and and BDS. Yeah, BDS. That, that program <laughs> knows a thing or two about winning. They're undefeated here going into the bracket play. And the that's semis on that side. So that's highly, highly competitive. Yep. Um, so those, yeah, those are the the undefeated teams there. Uh, and then D uh, D one the seventy uh, seventy Eddieville Miller is the one seed at eight and zero. Uh, Hay Springs is the two, um, and uh, Stewart is the three, and who's the, Garden County is the four. So those are the top seeds in the six man bracket. So everybody's in the postseason now. Um, it, uh, it it's time for winter go home. Yeah, should be fantastic uh, as we get as we get a few closing shout outs. Yep. Um, so shout out to Nate Collins. Uh, so Burke senior uh, duo of Nate Collins and Marcus Buchanan, Buchanan, who's Burke hasn't won a lot of games, but those two have put up some big numbers together over the last big couple of years. Uh, 78-6 win over Omaha South to close out the regular season. 
Collins, 21 to 28 for 435 yards and seven touchdowns, tying the record. Also uh, had 35 rushing yards and a two point conversion. Um, and Marcus Buchanan, nine catches for 243 yards and he's six tough, touchdowns. He's tough. Uh, he also had a tackle and a 63-yard interception return and converted two-point uh, conversion. So, um, yeah, those two last game of their the high school careers certainly went out uh, with with a great memory. Yeah, flying under the radar, aren't they? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Wood River senior Bo Rorick, uh, five yeah. seed Wood River, yeah, and one of the most productive players in the state this season. 32 carries, 246 yards, and three touchdowns. Also had four tackles on defense in a 33-16 win over a good Donovan Trumbull team. Um, Syracuse senior Cy Peterson, 20 carries, 249 yards and a touchdown converted two point try in a 45, 20 win over Wilbur, uh, Clatonia, uh, Ashton Greenwood, um, closed out the, the regular season with a, uh, 47, 20 win against Omaha gross there. Yeah. Securing that two seed. Yeah. And juniors, Derek Tonjas, Kale Smith, both, uh, had big games. Tonjas quarterback 14 to 23 for 152 yards and two touchdowns. And this is new. Seven carries for 100 yards and two touchdowns. Didn't think he had it in his nah, repertoire, right? Not really. Yeah. Uh, he hadn't really. He, he's he's happy to stay uh, to stay back there and sling it around the yard. But uh, yeah, showed he had, had some legs there too. Uh, and then Kale Smith is running back. 29 carries for 233 yards, two touchdowns, and a couple of tackles on defense. Um, Kozad senior Noah Shoemaker, 17 and 27 for 152 yards, a touchdown, and 23 carries for 160 yards and two touchdowns, plus eight tackles, two pass defense. Uh, in a 27 win over Minden. And then finally, Roncalli sophomore Brady McGill is what, like six straight it's, years of a it's Brady McGill at quarterback for them? <laughs> 10 to 13 for 283 it's yards. It's good to see him touchdowns. close, though, man. He's, he's had the battle injuries. Yeah. Big strong. Like, he was a good player. Yeah, really good player. So he had 283 yards and four touchdowns and uh, went over 300 yards of offense with uh, 27 yards on the ground as well for, for Roncalli in their win. Yeah, tell you what, it only gets. Uh, more competitive from here we'll be back next monday and we'll be previewing the next round of playoffs i'm sure there'll be surprises there always is especially at this time of the year that's my main man jacob padilla i am odb we appreciate austin producing just continuing to show off his talents it's another edition of neb preps Heard at Sports Network Production.